Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station. I'm Wesley from Google, joined by Serverless Expedition host Martin to help you modernize your apps running on Google Cloud. In this and the next migration module, our little friend Portal will take you on a journey to migrate from App Engine's user's API or bundle service to the cloud identity platform. And I am happy to be here as always, Wes. So uh, what's today's migration about? Well, the App Engine user service provides a lightweight and easy to use Google sign-in service, meaning user authentication backed by Google as the identity provider. However, uh, to make your App Engine apps more portable, we recommend moving away from App Engine only services like the user's API. That said, this video won't feature any migrating at all. No migrating at all, Wes? Uh, why not? I, I thought this was the migration video series. You're right. Usually, Porter does take users from point A to point B. But here in Module 20, we need to take a detour first to reacquaint folks with App Engine users. We'll add its use to the Module 1 sample app, and then we can migrate to Identity Platform in Module 21. OK, I think I get it. Uh, we're taking one of our original Python 2 apps, adding uh, the App Engine user service to it. And then we migrate that app uh, from the old user service to the new Identity Platform. You got it, Martin. In Module 1, we have already migrated from App Engine's Web App 2 framework to Flask, a popular framework in the Python community. While Web App 2 apps run on App Engine, Flask apps run on App Engine and most other hosting services, so you can move off of App Engine if you ever need to. Pause now to review the Module 1 video and its code lab to reacquaint yourself with that migration, because this module picks up from where that one leaves off. Great. Uh, before we move ahead, uh, earlier you said users was a lightweight Google sign-in service for App Engine. Uh, does the user service do anything more than sign in and sign out? Uh, good question, Martin. Yep, aside from logging in and out, the user service helps your app determine whether a user has signed in, and if so, gives your app basic user information. It also provides convenient login and logout links for your app, as well as supporting the concept of admin users and admin-only functionality. Ah, great overview of the user service. Uh, now, how are we going to use it in our sample app here? Another good question. Since the goal of this is to port to Identity Platform, we're not going to make any major updates and keeping it simple. The app's core functionality stays identical. All we're doing is adding a login or logout button at the top, showing the user's email if signed in, and also an admin badge if the user is an admin. Sounds good. As our coworker Sarah often says, keep it as simple as possible. Uh, by the way, who uh, or what determines if a user is an admin inside our App Engine app? You make a user an admin of the app by granting them the App Engine App Admin IAM role. But what if I'm a developer working on the app, and I need to be able to deploy new versions of it? Uh, how is that kind of admin different from this kind of app admin you mentioned? Yeah, it's very different. People who use the app are different from those who are developing the app. For app developers, roles like viewer, editor, and owner are appropriate. However, they are legacy roles that come with too many permissions, so we generally recommend avoiding them. Bottom line is, you're an admin if you belong to at least one of the four roles you see on screen. But in keeping with the best practice of least privilege, the App Engine App Admin role is the best and most restrictive role to have, yet still be recognized as an admin user. Ah, that's great. I'm a lot less confused now, uh, Wes, about these two different types of admin. Uh, I'm ready to add the user service to the Module 1 app. Uh, can I do it by hand while you're showing us on screen? Absolutely. Grab your Module 1 Python 2 app if you did the code lab, or clone the repo or download the zip file if you didn't. Pause here if you need to do that. Module 1 is where we'll start. You'll find the links down below to the repo and Module 20 code lab to do this by hand with me now or on your own time. All right, let's go to the computer now and do this. For all migrations, we really want to start with a working app, in this case, the Module 1 sample. Whether you use your code from doing the code lab or copied it from the repo, delete the lib folder if you have one and run the pip install command to install or reinstall the third-party libraries into the lib folder. Upgrading to Python 3 is great because you no longer have to do this vendoring or self-bundling. Now, run gcloud app deploy to upload to the cloud. The app should show the most recent visits, including the visit you just made. Now that we've verified that it works, let's add login, logout, and admin functionality using the user's API. In many migrations, we start by modifying the configuration files, but not this time. None of the config files need to be touched, so let's go straight to the core application file main.py. First, add an import of the user's API, the module Google App Engine API users. That was pretty straightforward. The most critical update is to add support for users and admins in the main handler. The key changes are reflected directly in the user interface or UI. So we need to add all of the necessities to the context for the web template. And the context differs depending on whether the user is logged in or not. 
The first thing we do in the new section of code is to get the current user. If false, the user isn't logged in, so set the context to generically show user as a username. Display a login button with an action of being sent to a login page if clicked. And if user object comes back instead, this means the user is logged in, so set the context with the user's email address and switch the login button to logout. Next, check if the user is an admin or not, and show an admin badge if they are. Signing out is a little bit more convoluted than it should be. Unfortunately, the user's API create logout URL function returns a link that logs you out of all of your Google accounts, out of all your browser tabs, which is probably not what you want. So our version handcrafts a URL that logs users out of the app only and redirects back to home, where home comes from the Flask request objects environment variables. Finally, the most recent visits are added to the context, regardless of whether the user is logged in or not, and the template is rendered. Now that's it for the main application updates. Now let's take a look at the index.html web template. Most of it stays the same, but we slip in what's required to support user logins. At the top, display a welcome message with the user's email if logged in, or just user if not. This is the who variable. An admin badge in monofont is displayed if the user is an admin. Yep, this is the admin variable. The log button variable is the placeholder for the login or logout button. If the user is signed in, it's a logout button. If they're not, it's a login button. That's the job of the sign variable. A horizontal line divides this user information and functionality from the most recent visits display, which remains unchanged. The second new chunk of code added to the web template is at the bottom. It gets the log button and sets the click action to either the login or logout URLs. If the button says login, then the link variable is the login link, and similarly for logout. Those are all the changes to add use of the user service to the Module 1 sample app. Now let's deploy this new Module 20 app to confirm it works. Before that, replace the lib folder by deleting the old one and running the pip install command to reinstall the third party dependencies. Now run gcloud app deploy to deploy the app. Once it's uploaded, you should now see welcome user with a login button at the top followed by the expected most recent visits. Now click it and log in as yourself. If you're the only Google user, you'll be prompted for the normal username and password. If you're signed in with multiple Google accounts, then you'll see the account selector first and be prompted with a password if necessary after that. Once you sign in as an owner of the app, you should see the admin badge applied right next to your email address. Click the logout button and you should be returned to the original welcome user followed by a login button. Now log in as another Google user who isn't an admin. You should see the email address, but no admin badge followed by another logout button. So that was a rundown of our modification to the Module 1 app resulting in the Module 20 app integrated with the App Engine user service. Okay, time to wrap up. Thanks for the tutorial, Wes. Uh, can you point us to the user's API docs so our viewers can learn more about it? Sure, Martin. Below, I've got all kinds of links to the user's API overview page, the API reference docs, and all of the IAM roles because they can be confusing, which includes the four roles I mentioned earlier that gives users admin access. That's a lot of links. I'll take a look. Uh, now that we've added user sign-in to our sample app, uh, what are our next steps? Well, next in Module 21, we're going to show you how to migrate to the Identity Platform. But before we do that, a quick note that in fall of 2021, the App Engine team made bundled services like users available in second generation runtimes like Python 3, so you don't have to move off of users in order to upgrade your app. More on this is covered in Module 17. But if you do want to migrate to Identity Platform, check out the Identity Platform docs as well as the Cloud Resource Manager API, which we need to use. You can also do the Module 21 Code Lab to get a head start or check out the Module 21 21 code samples in the repo, and of course, the video. Uh -huh. I heard that Identity Platform is based on Firebase authentication, which is a client-side solution. So it's perfect for those using modern web frameworks like Vue and Angular and React. Is that right? Yep, it is based on Firebase Auth, which also allows users to log in from Twitter and Facebook and a bunch of other identity providers. And also, yes, that users is strictly server-side solution. So in Module 21, we'll be converting it to client-side. And we look forward to having you join us for that migration. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we'll see you at that next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Happy travels. Mm -hmm.